Newman projections are a way of viewing a molecule down the CC bond axis. Consider the molecule ethane. Ethane is C2H6, really two CH3 groups bonded to each other. And each of the carbons is sp3 hybridized and hence tetrahedral. So here is a three-dimensional bond line structure using wedges and dashes. Now keep in mind, this hydrogen is going up and to the left and towards you. This hydrogen is going up and to the left and away from you. This hydrogen is going down and to the left, and it's in the plane. The CC bond is in the plane. This hydrogen is going up and to the right and is in the plane. This one is down and to the right and away from you, and this one is down and to the right and toward you. Here's the ethane molecule drawn in mole view. This is the hydrogen on the left that's on the wedge. Here's the one that's on the dash. Here's the one that's in the plane wedge. This one behind is on the dash. This is the one in the plane. Now to draw our Newman projection, we're going to take our eye and look straight down the carbon-carbon bond axis. Here we're looking from the left-hand side of the molecule. So doing that is really equivalent to changing the angle at which we view the molecule. And this is what we see. This is the hydrogen on the left-hand side of our bond line structure that's on the wedge. This is the one on the dash. This is the one going straight down and to the left. This is the one that was on the wedge on the right-hand structure. This is the one on the dash on the right-hand side. And this is the one going straight up. So this is what we see in mole view. And the Newman projection is just going to be recreating that with a drawing. Okay, so let's label some things. The carbon that's closer to our eye is the front. The carbon that's further away from our eye is the back. Right, F and B in our original drawing. And now with my color coding, the ones on the wedges are the green ones and the ones on the dashes I color coded in blue. Okay so as far as the Newman projection the front carbon has one hydrogen going straight down that's this one and then the hydrogen going up and to the right That's the one I drew in green over here. And then the hydrogen going up and to the left is the one I drew in blue. So that's my front carbon. For my back carbon, we're going to draw a circle. Right, so that's my front, and then the circle is the back carbon. So the hydrogen going straight up and back is here. The hydrogen going down and to the right is in green. That's this one. The hydrogen going down and to the right and away from you, whoa, that's this one, oops, draw that in blue, this hydrogen here. Now in mole view, if I took this, and I spun it around, 
so that now the right hand carbon is the front. This is what we see. So now just to draw this as a Newman projection, now our right hand carbon is the front and our left hand carbon is the back. So as we draw the front, the triangle is inverted. Also, looking from the right-hand side, stuff that was on wedges is now on the left-hand side of your Newman projection, and stuff that was on dashes is now on the right-hand side. This is the opposite of looking at it from the left. Okay, so this is our front carbon, and now we'll draw the back carbon. Here's the one that I've just drawn going straight down is this. And the one that's going up and to the right is on a dash. It's this one. The one going up and to the left is on a wedge. So compare these two Newman projections, the one from the left and the one from the right. And what do you notice? Maybe what we should do is just number these instead, 1 and 2, instead of front and back, because front and back changes. So if we're looking from the left, 1 is the front, 2 is the back. If we're looking from the right, 2 is the front, and 1 is the back. Also, look at the triangles. Looking from the left, the one going straight down is in the plane. That's this one. So when we're looking from the left, our triangle looks like this, whereas when we're looking from the right, our triangle and our front carbon looks like this. Here's an exercise. You're going to draw the Newman projection for this molecule from the left. Now, it'll be helpful to first draw in where you're looking from. So when we say from the left, we mean looking down this carbon-carbon bond here. It's also a good idea to fill in things that are implied, like make a note that this is a methyl group, and this is a methyl group. Finally, you should also draw in the implied hydrogens. So, for instance, this carbon's only showing three bonds. It should have four. And the fourth one that um, we don't show in bond line structures is a hydrogen. Now, we already have two bonds that are in the plane and one that's on a wedge. So the fourth one should be on a dash. So we're going to put our hydrogen like this. And we're going to do the same thing with this carbon here. Okay. So now pause it and draw that Newman projection and resume when you're ready to see the answer. So here is the answer, and we're looking at it from the left, which means the left-hand carbon is the front carbon. So our front triangle is going to look like that, with a methyl group at the top, a hydroxyl, and a hydrogen. Our back carbon, the triangle is going to look like this. The methyl is at the bottom, 
the hydroxyl is at the top right because it's on a wedge and the hydrogens on the top left because it's on a dash. So then when we put that all together, methyl, hydroxyl, hydrogen, there's our front carbon, our back carbon, methyl, hydroxyl, hydrogen. Is that what you got? Nice job. We should also point out that it is allowed to rotate around a carbon-carbon single bond. So imagine that I rotate the front carbon 180 degrees. Or let's not do 180. Let's rotate it 120 degrees. Okay, so that means the hydroxyl is going to end up where the methyl was, the methyl ends up where the hydrogen was, and the hydrogen ends up where the hydroxyl was. That's a 120 degree rotation. The back carbon, or the right hand carbon, which is the back carbon in our Newman projection, stays the same. But now, our hydroxyl group on the left-hand carbon is here, and the wedge on the left carbon is where our methyl group is. Sorry, the wedge is where our hydrogen is, and the dash is where our methyl ended up. Right, so our original structure, looking from the left, gave us this Newman projection. What about looking from the same angle at the rotated structure? Pause your video and draw it. All right, so our front carbon still looks like this. But now the hydroxyl is going up. The methyl is now on a dash, so it's going to be on the left. And the hydrogen is going to be on the right. And our back carbon looks the same as it initially did, with the methyl going down, the hydroxyl going up and to the right, and the hydrogen going up and to the left. So this is the Newman projection after the rotation. I should stress dihedral angles. What we did was we rotated the front carbon 120 degrees. So when we started out, the hydroxyl group on the back carbon had a dihedral of 60 degrees from the front carbon. Uh, and that's counterclockwise. We did a 120 degree rotation, and now the back carbon is 60 degrees clockwise. These are what we call staggered configurations. But it's also possible to have an eclipsed configuration with a zero degree torsion angle. So, for instance, If instead of doing a 120 degree rotation on this to get this, I did a 60 degree rotation on the front carbon. Right, so I'm going to rotate the front carbon 60 degrees counterclockwise. Now look what happens. My triangle in front is upside down. 
And there's my hydroxyl group. There's my hydrogen. And here's my methyl. And my back carbon stays the same. And so it would be superimposed. So I'm going to just draw it a slight amount counterclockwise from my front carbon. This is what we call an eclipsed configuration. And the bond line structure for this would look a little bit different. In fact, it looks like this. The hydrogen on the left-hand carbon is going straight down on a flat bond. It is eclipsed with the methyl group. Now there's a steric interaction between those two sets of atoms. Moreover, the hydroxyl groups are eclipsed with each other. And we've also got another methyl hydrogen eclipse. These eclipsing interactions decrease stability, so they are less stable than a staggered configuration.